Ramsey, and this is Dr. Urick. I was honored to train Dr. Urick when she was a child and mentor her in doing wildlife rehabilitation. These are animals that are injured, and most of the injuries that they get are man-induced. They're not an injury that the animal specifically goes out and asks for. There's nobody out in the wild that's going to help these animals except for a very special group of people who are willing to work very, very hard for hardly any reward. But my reward will be today when Pecos, is what we named him, gets to go free and know that he's had his second chance of freedom. A couple weeks ago, I was down in Carlsbad visiting Dr. Urick, and we got a phone call after I left town that they had an injured red-tailed hawk that had just come in. I wasn't there at the clinic when we got the call. She's out on a farm call, which is what she's supposed to be doing. So I just turned around because it's really hard to get them all the way to northern New Mexico, and I'm from north of Santa Fe in Española. So I just turned around and came back and walked into her office and said, um, that's not a red-tailed hawk. <laughs> so we brought Pecos in, and Pecos is the first-year bald eagle, and bald eagles are interesting. They're one of the few birds we can age by their feathers. It takes a bald eagle five years to be a bald eagle. What we know of a white head and a white tail. The first year, they're very commonly confused with golden eagles. They have a black beak and not that pure yellow, gorgeous beak. They have horrible, grucky looking feathers and they just look grimy and dirty all over. The second year, they think they're supposed to be a bald eagle and they grow more white feathers, but they still don't have any idea what to do with their white feathers. The third year, they're starting to put the feathers more toward their tail and a little more toward the head. The fourth year, they know they belong on the head and the tail, but they played in the mud puddle. They're filthy dirty, but their feathers and they're right in the right places. The fifth year, they molt and they have beautiful white heads and beautiful white tails. Golden eagles, on the reverse, we can only age for three years. The year they hatch, if you see them flying, you see a white window in their wings. That's a first year baby golden. It's four to six feathers of white, and she loses, I say she, and I'm just because I'm female. They lose two feathers the first year, two feathers the second year, and two feathers the third year, and then they're just pure brown underneath, and we can't age them. Captive golden eagles and bald eagles can re live 50 to 75 years. Wow. Unfortunately, man is not kind. What do bald eagles eat? Okay, what else do bald eagles eat? Snakes. Snakes. Not very often. Birds. Other fowl. Ducks. Okay. So what happens in the winter is they live up in the northern, northern Canada, northern Alaska, because the ponds and the water freezes, they are forced to move further down to follow waterfowl, ducks, that are moving. Well, I have two game and fish officers here, so don't shoot me. <laughs> what happens with a duck hunter? What do we use? Steel. Well, we use shot. Not a 22 that is a single bullet, but it's shot. It's loaded in a tube, and there's any number of pieces of, of metal that are put in that tube, and that's what we call shot. When we shoot at that duck, it scatters. And what happens in that scatter pattern is, is it killed that duck, but the duck flying next to it got one pellet in its breast, and it didn't die. And it doesn't hurt that duck in any way, shape, or form. That duck walls it off and makes it scar. But guess what he had for dinner last night? He caught that duck, he ate that breast muscle, that one piece of shot got into his stomach, it digested, and now we have lead poisoning. One tiny piece of lead shot. It's illegal in the United States in most of our major water pads for us to use lead shot. But I don't care what any law says, there are good people and there are bad people. And there are a lot of people that use steel shot. We were talking about last night looking at pictures of snapping turtles. And one of their biggest things is, is that you caught the fish and then 
the snapping turtle catches your fish and you're reeling in that big turtle and you cut the line? Well, we're finally getting the fishing companies no longer to put lead in those hooks. That snapping turtle will swallow that hook down and digest it over time. As long as it's not lead, that snapping turtle will live. But if it is lead, that snapping turtle is going to die. Lead weights are the same thing that these birds can pick them up on. So that's why you're seeing us trying very hard to move in our wildlife systems away from lead because it's very, very, very damaging. This particular bird came in with lead poisoning. When we picked him up, he could stand there and hold his head in and just could hardly move at all. And now that isn't what this bird's like anymore. <laughs> so what we do with rehab is it's an expensive process. Dr. Urich got the bird in. It came up to me. I did the medical treatment. It then went to another rehabilitation facility that has over 100 foot flight. In order to get a bird like this back into the wild, you need about a $100,000 flight cage just to be able to do it. There aren't a whole lot of us that have that as spare cash. I tell everybody down here, remember, Desert Willow, Raptor Rehabilitation, she's got a matching grant, 50 cents buys a mouse, $2 buys a rat, and these guys are expensive. Just the medical care on this bird alone at this point is $1,500. Wow. Just to get one eagle back into the wild where he belongs. And without people like Dr. Urich and all of the rest of us who <coughs> care about him, we couldn't do this. We're waiting for her. Okay, so we've got Josh found it. So Josh gets to tell me whether it's a golden eagle or, or a red tail hawk. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
teaching this to John. <laughs> the apple catch these guys, and I'm impressed you caught this bird and got it in the air like crazy you did. <laughs> I'm very impressed. This bird is not feathered to the feet. This bird is only feathered to what we call the hawk joint, which is the equivalent of our ankle. Remember that those talons can grab at 2,000 pounds per square inch. You really don't want to be in the middle of it. You can see this bird has no idea where in the world to put that white that he's supposed to wear. So does anybody have any questions? Let's show you guys the wing. This particular bird is just short of six foot wingspan. Not quite as big as those pelicans out there. So he was able to catch it because it was so thick. No, probably not at all. It's his normal food all winter. If you get the joy of watching one of these guys hunt ducks, if you're watching an eagle hunt ducks, they don't catch them with their feet. They fly in above, and as the duck comes off the water, they ball their feet up into just a tight ball, and they come down and they pop the back of the duck. Throws the head of the duck back, and the neck breaks. Then the bird swings back around and grabs the duck and eats it. So rarely are they catching the ducks with their feet as skill. So they're not doing like you think about with fishing, where they're actually going in and grabbing it. Somebody was commenting a minute ago about birds carrying the fish forwards or sideways. Osprey can only carry a fish pointed forward because they are not as aerodynamically strong as an eagle is. A bald eagle can catch a fish left, right, forward, backwards. It really doesn't matter. And they can get that, e that fish out of the water. But I've seen many a bald eagle go fishing and swimming. Is there any chance that it would attack a human? Uh, not in the wild, because what's his response to you? People are bad, so as soon as you get too close to him, he's going to fly. And if you get a bird that doesn't want to fly, then you need to call Mr. Josh over here with New Mexico Game and Fish, because it means that bird is sick and we need to bring him in and get him help. Because <laughs> normally a healthy bird doesn't want you anywhere near it. It's going to fly away and get out of there. Well, uh, I really appreciate Dr. Ramsey and all of her help. And like she said, she's, she's, I think I'm the fortunate one, actually, to have her as my mentor for the last 25 years. Uh, she's an exceptional person. She's an exceptional veterinarian. Um, and these are big shoes to fill. <laughs> uh, but she's been an inspiration to me all this time. And uh, is the inspiration behind the rehab center that we're creating here. And I want to acknowledge some people that are here today to make it happen. Um, first of all, I've got some of my board members here that I'd like to acknowledge and have them step up. Steve West. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Here's our Steve West. Here. Right, here we go. Ty Allen. I can't hide. spot and so they're gonna one or both possibly will be joining our board hopefully pretty soon um, we had some board members that weren't able to make it today but there is one hiding in the background who really aside from Dr. Ramsey is responsible for all this and that's my mother Ann Rayro she's hiding back there and actually I met Ann Rayro 30 plus years ago doing rehab and I have to give her a lot of credit because 30 years ago, it was something that was not done. And anybody that took the time and energy to take care of wildlife, and she has done a phenomenal job and brought up a phenomenal girl to continue those big shoes. Thank you, Ann. There's some other very important people that I would like to call up here and, and recognize today, people that have believed in us enough to help 
us get some funding to get started. And I, if any of you have been on our Facebook page or have seen the newspaper, uh, it, this has been almost unheard of in the rehab world uh, to get a financial award of this size. And, and we really we couldn't do this without you. Uh, the Benjamin P. Duke Trust at Carlsbad National Bank and the Benjamin P. Duke Memorial Fund at Carlsbad Foundation. And those representatives are here today. We've got Carl Manganero and Mike Anaporta. Can you guys please come up here? And did, did Irma make it? Watch out, girls, because those feet, okay? I'm going to tell you to take your right hand foot in your hand okay. and understand this. More strength than you have. Mm. Mm. So you're going to take it in your right hand and you're going to close your hand over it and just say, I have it. <laughs> and I'm going to pass into your chest. Right hand over Is there any way we can? Do we need to move anymore? Do you guys? But I don't know if you guys can with all the crowd. Can you see it from over there? Thank you. 